Hi. Uh, Hi. I'm Anna Hendricks, and I am an artist, a music artist, a multidisciplinary artist. And uh, one of the things that I am doing is welcoming you to a tea slash coffee chat uh, to support and support of the Colored Girls, uh, the play that is on Broadway currently uh, created, written by Indizaki Shangi. This is a revival of an amazing uh, work. And uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it. But today I am going to be in conversation with Nicolene Thomas, who is yet another amazing woman of color, black woman artist, uh, working in multiple disciplines as well. And I think what we'd like to talk about is how the colored girls, uh, I, I always want to say the whole name of the play as I say it, but uh, it has had an effect on either myself or on Nicolene or Nicolene's awareness of it or in uh, as an artist and what it means to uh, specifically Nicolene to have a play like this uh, on Broadway, have it exist representing women of color in the same way as Nicolene represents women of color in her artwork and uh, collage work. So I will start with uh, telling you a little bit more about Nicolene Thomas. Um, Nicolene is a contemporary African-American visual artist, best known as a painter of complex works using rhinestones, acrylic, and enamel. Uh, Micheline's collage work is inspired from popular art histories and movements, including Impressionism, Cubism, Dada, and Odada, the, <laughs> the Harlem Renaissance. Her work draws on Western art history, pop art, visual culture to examine ideas around femininity, beauty, race, sexuality, and gender, specifically focused on women of color. Yes. Clean. Hi. Hi. This is so, great. So happy to be here. Last time I saw you, you were dancing in the audience at the ICA gala. Well, how could I not dance in the audience? You were, <laughs> you were, you came through and I had no idea and just blew us all away <laughs> with your fantastic <laughs> voice it was, and it style. Was, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is like everything I need right now. <laughs> uh, wonderful. It was fun. I, you know, had no idea that that audience would break out on the dance floor like they did. So led by this little uh, woman who I thought was like, okay, where did she come from? But yeah, that was a uh, really wonderful. But here we want to, uh, you know, what is, what is your experience? Did you uh, uh, hear, uh, how did you hear of for colored girls, when did you hear? Well, when I learned about, well, I learned about for colored girls the uh, Intazaki Shange's uh, for colored girls um, who considered suicide when the rainbow was enough through reading Sassafras, um, Cypress, and Indigo. Um, so that's how I came into learning about Intazaki was through her her, po her poems and her, her literature. Um, and then from there, after re reading Sassafras, I read uh, For Colored Girls. Yes. And how I came into being a co-producer and a part of this play was I had the incredible opportunity of being introduced to Ron Simons uh, through um, a, a mentor, but also a financial advisor, uh, Lola West. Oh. Um, she thought it was a great opportunity for me to meet Ron because this play was coming on production. And being that, as we stated, my work is so much about Black women and celebrating Black women and also presenting sort of Black identity and just dealing with desire and, and beauty and gender issues. Um, it just seemed like a great fit to be a part of it. Um, yeah. It seemed very 
at the moment, it seemed right. It seemed aligned with my vision as an artist. Um, and so just very excited to be a part of it and do whatever I can to make this produ production successful. The play itself is just incredibly, incredibly triumphant, a celebration of Black women and its current issues. Um, and so much talent, so much talent on the stage. Um, and not just from the performers, the staging, the lighting, the color, all of it is just done so well. I'm so inspired by that as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in a way, because looking at how the stage was being used and things and how the women were being choreographed mm -hmm. with uh, not a lot of props, that was very exciting to me of how the lighting was sort of just creating this narrative and moment within sort of the storytelling that was happening. For me as an artist, I was really sort of engaged with that and just like, oh my gosh, this is so with the screens and the images and just thought about how I could, as an artist, do some of that within my own work. Mm -hmm. So I was inspired by sort of the effects of the stage, but also just the just incredible talent that was just there like it's something that I would definitely I'm going to actually go see it again um I'm taking a group of uh my employees as uh a gift to have them see the performance so it's just it's it's a great time I think this is this is definitely a play that I you know obviously I was I was too young to see the first iteration yes <laughs> that was at the public and on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And although this, this parts of this version was at the public, I think in 2018 or in 2019, I didn't have the chance to see and I was traveling so much um, that year. Mm -hmm. um, but once I knew that this play was coming to Broadway, I, I knew I wanted to be involved in some way. Um, I think it would be questionable if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, and it's it's so wonderful that you are a a producer, uh, a Broadway producer, added to your other credits that you have, incredible work, uh, and also I have to say uh, uh, thank you to Ron for bringing not only you but also bringing Valencia Yearwood, bringing women of color uh, mm -hmm. to the table into the room uh, to produce our stories, um, you know, uh, Thoughts of the Colored Man, uh, yep. Colored Girls, and uh, other works that are in the works and that have happened in the past. So it's, it's one, and I think the thing that has been, is so wonderful about that is that there are many people mm -hmm. in my conversation with Valencia and with Ron that uh, women specifically and women of color don't think they have the wherewithal to be a Broadway producer. Mm -hmm. Ron is showing and leading the way uh, to show that you can and you can come at whatever level you're capable of contributing and that the more of us who come, the, you know, the, we can support work mm -hmm. or can be brought forward. So I think, I think that's wonderful that you are uh, there and that the knowledge of that will be sh shared not only in the theater world, but in the art world mm -hmm. and the other worlds that you uh, traverse in with the music and the music artists you work with. The more of us who come to the room and to the table, uh, the more our stories will be told. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, with this opportunity and you're like speaking on something that's very near and dear to my heart is that we need to continue telling our stories, but we also need to be involved with how those stories are told, right? And I think that's why when we look at sort of television as this great platform, how, you know, with people like Shonda Rhimes and all of these women who are involved, not just, you know, they're involved from like 
the writing to the producing, just like really making sure, you know, you have like Lena Waithe, all of these people who are involved that's changing sort of that sort of makeup of what television is today. Mm -hmm. Because we are telling the stories and not only telling the stories, we're creating the content. We're the producers. We're bringing the money to the table. And that's what's needed in theater is that there needs to be more of us involved. So that way, when productions like For Color Girls come to Broadway, we have the support that's needed. Yes, absolutely. And, and it also allows us to bring all of our creativity to the fore. And, you know, we are such a multi uh, colored people mm -hmm. that there's so much the, the mixture from the, the Latinx to, you know, the, the island uh, Caribbean to uh, the Asian uh, mixture within mm -hmm. the, the color, you know, the African, you know, African Mexican, the African American, the African, mm -hmm. you know, the Black British. All of that, all of those stories are uh, stories that we need to tell as well as bringing into the mix the other cultures that we mix in. And, yeah. you know, so that we're, we're not, as I've said, a monolith. We are a, a cornucopia yeah. of, of people. And then it comes down to the human uh, part of this. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask is the, you know, how it has this play has impacted you know you've shared some of that but in your work going forward the impact that this play will have on you which also probably will draw some sassafras back into your uh, mm -hmm. you know into now mm -hmm. i think one of the ways in which this play um will impact my my studio practice is really thinking about um, poetry and story and how you can use that with sound. I'm, you know, in the last couple of years, I've been really uh, fortunate to collaborate with like Terry Lynn Carrington and doing with Entrepre, where I'm doing some visual images yes. to her musical compositions or scores, mm -hmm. and that's a that's given me really a incredible window into understanding music mm -hmm. and because of that you know understanding jazz and because of sort of all of those layers within music and jazz I'm able to um as a mixer as someone who is an image maker and someone who takes images and collage and sort of makes sense out of sort of what these images mean in the world mm -hmm. I'm able to create new content from that it's 13 hours. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 13 hours. Okay. <laughs> my, I, I don't know how to turn off the time thing on my computer. My, my daughter put this time code on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, a reminder. A reminder of what time it is. Yes. To keep that's me on point, that's for sure. Yes, and me as well. So the, the thing that, uh, you know. But it's, just, it's, it's been like really i'm excited like i don't always know to be just very transparent and honest about how i work in a very organic way i don't always know at that moment i know it's resonating i'm absorbing like what i'm taking in and it's not always clear to me right now what the effects are going to be but i sort of take it and i catalog it and i store it yes. right and have it go through me but I know that it's going to permeate and resonate and come out and be executed maybe a month from now, two months, a year, but it comes back into the work, right? So it's not lost and like, it's not an immediate response, you know? So I'm taking in, I'm just like really appreciating it, right? And really being a part of it and, and immersed in it. And so because of that, just naturally as a creative person, it's going to have an effect on some of my work and my practice. Yes, I, I identify completely. That is uh, that is my path to creativity, uh, and but and also I think with Intizaki, having known Intizaki uh, and performed with Intizaki, uh, wow. and uh, just you know spent so much 
in the same sort of lanes mm -hmm. places over time. And in the Zaki's uh, exploration with music, and we did a show at Irving Plaza many years ago. I did something called Word Life, and uh, the last po last poets, different people like that, were on it. And in the Zaki, and she did, which I have a uh, a version of Transformation, which she wrote um, a spoken word poetry uh, piece for, and it was really interesting where she took it and what she needed to say about it. But her uh, incorporating music and then for colored girls having music uh, as a, you know, connecting of the stories, uh, I think it's really wonderful that, to see that you do, you know, you're finding that in your work as well. And so maybe there will be a Micheline Thomas uh, Broadway or theater piece, because what you do, you know, in your work is very much uh, theater, but from a different, uh, using different uh, tools or different performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and just like when you think of someone also like Camille A. Brown, you know, who is, you know, the first director and choreographer of a play in like 65 years on Broadway. And, you know, we should also mention that, you know, For Colored Girls has been nominated for seven nominations, Tony Award nominations, which is so incredible and exciting, you know, and, it, you know, like to, to do that is like, that is for me testament of the power of this play is that the point is we got to get people in to see it. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's due to close June 8th and yeah. we don't want it. It does. This play does not need to close. No, this place should not close. No, it is. It is so needed and so important that it needs to be there for people to not just people of color or women mm -hmm. of color to come and see, you know, themselves represented other people uh, need to come and see the and hear mm -hmm. the representation that they don't uh, know and don't engage with uh, and, and maybe gain uh, a better understanding of some of the people that they work with in their job mm -hmm. or they engage with in, in the street or in stores or you know wherever they are so that they that that yes you're right needs to be seen Camille Brown being, uh, you know, this uh, anomaly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, and that this is a cast of women of color. Uh, and all types of women of color. Yes. Like you said, you know, the diaspora, you're, you know what I mean? It's just like incredible. You know, we have one woman who's like, I think eight months pregnant or something, maybe seven, maybe I'm exaggerating how pregnant she is, but she looked pretty pregnant to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I was just stuck on her. I was just like, okay, mama, okay, mother. Yeah. But yeah. that's just testament of like the resilience and sort of who we are as, as women and as black women that yeah. we could be carrying child, right? Yes. We could be carrying child and still do, and still do, still do. Whether it's inside us, on a back, on a side, whatever, on a head, yes. and we're still doing. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, that is, and it, and it is such a, uh, you know, not only for women of color because we've had to do that and more and extra, right, mm -hmm. and that other bag of chips we had to do, uh, but women have, you know, that that multitasking ability that comes from, I think, the, from mothering uh, is really something that either as a mother or something you learn from your mothers, mm -hmm. as a woman, that you have to be able to have eyes at the back of your head, because my mama had eyes at the back of her head. She could see when I was doing something I shouldn't be doing, yeah. but I thought she wasn't looking. So. Yes, these are, you know, representing all of these women, you know, like Oakley, 
who is just a phenomenal uh, oh. artist. Um, I had never seen her in this kind of role. And it's really, you know, for the world to be able to see her. The world needs to see it. And, you know, I've been reaching out to as many as my network of sisters and, and Black women and Black men to like really encourage them to like be responsible, to be responsible in supporting this pr production, this revival. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes we are not supportive as a community to when to show up. This is when we need you to show up. <laughs> Yes. This is when we need you to put your money where your mouth. This is when we yes. need you to we show need, up. We need those school trips, you know, the church trips. We need the group trips. We need the 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 phi, psi, beta, whatever, zeta, whatever sorority you're in uh, to come and you know and you know and feast on you. Yeah, absolutely. Because when I say they need to show up, because the lack of not being present is to show the world and to show Broadway that these type of things cannot be produced or shouldn't be produced yes. or invested in. Yes, and that we will that we will support it, mm -hmm. really, because yeah. that's you know the the numbers and the figures, people. That's what they're looking at. They're not looking at your you know, so much supporting your culture. They're looking huh. at those numbers. And then, and that is important because there are people who, with the women in this play, the people who are doing this uh, set designs, the lighting, the sound, they earn a living and they need to be uh, paid to do their work. So taking in consideration, taking yeah. all of that, I think, I think the more uh, people of color are educated about the process, get involved in the process, you know, maybe get, you know, look for a project that Ron may be doing or somebody else is presenting or promoting, whether it's local or whether it's on Broadway, but looking at maybe you have a group that could come together and have some funding to add to it and you become a producer. Yeah. Of, of what it is that you want to see. And that's that's a good point and learning the different facets of what it takes to put on a production you know that needs to be exposed to uh young people as well because a lot of them don't know that you can even be a broadway producer that yes. that's part of a career you know option yes. or that you can do lighting design or you can do sound on yes. broadway that it doesn't necessarily there's so many different aspects to what makes that production come together, you know, and the, all the creative aspects of the different artists that are involved for when those characters, when those the, the actors go to perform before you. Like yeah. all of that is a part of it. And when people don't know what those careers are, there's, there's a lack of aspiration to want to, to go into those fields. Um, yeah. And to, to just learn about it. And I Oops, we lost Micheline. Ron? Yes, she, I think her um, internet probably failed. She's gonna have to uh, dial no. back in. Yes, okay. Um, is there anything else that we need to say that we just um, I would I would I would just you don't have to say it this is a correction but remind people that we closed June 5th not June 8th okay. I told Nicolene 8 wrong and incorrectly right. and should I do the artist names who are in the play absolutely you need that okay. absolutely so because I think it's about they are along with all the other their creators the other people are telling the story. So yeah, okay. please feel All free right. to say their names. And, you know, again, remember, uh, tell the folks that the one big nomination is Best Revival of a Play. Okay, Best Revival of a Play. And it, uh, you may or may not know, but um, 
uh, we have the most Tony nominations of any play currently on Broadway. Okay. Strange Loop has 11 nominations as a musical, but we as a play have seven nominations. This is the most of any play currently on Broadway. Okay. I'll just do that. Um, I, I thought I had a list of the uh, artist names. You oh, you can just go to for colored, go to the website for yeah. coloredgirlsbway.com. Okay. And then click on cast. Bway.com. Bway.com, yes. Hmm. Why is it not coming up? On, I use it. Why? So sorry, Micheline. I'm sitting here going about to call you and you sitting there knocking on the sure door. What happened? I was disconnected. <laughs> yeah, you just got you just dropped out. There. I know. I think it, you know what? And the lights on here in the house went off. I think there might have been a, a quick outage. Do you have any light that might be pointing towards? Toward, toward? Well, okay. <laughs> oh, how am I supposed <laughs> There's two different images that are messing me up because what Micheline is doing on the bottom right is not what Micheline is doing on the left. Oh, she's on her phone, I think. Her phone and she's on. Yeah, because, yeah. Let me just, you, you have to turn one of them uh, audio off. Yeah, whichever one you want to get rid of. Probably for consistency, it's probably better to keep the one with, in the kitchen, if that's a kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And any light that you can You're spare back. toward You're you back. would be a good thing. We need your own. Get that back. close. Okay. I don't, we can't hear you. Are you muted? You're muted. Yeah. Wow. That was, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know. The. Uh, I wasn't sure because sometimes Zoom is on a time. I was like, oh my gosh, did it go oh. off? Yeah, no. Technology, no. you know. Exactly. It does its own thing. So I'm going to come back with um, uh, the talking about the uh, Tony nominations, best, best survival of a play. So should I just go into that? And then I can go on to list the name of some of the, of the actors. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. They're so and, amazing. OK, we'll do that. And then. I had one more question to ask you, Nicolene. Okay. And I'm going to say that it actually closes June 5th. Oh, June 5th, not June 8th. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, no, me, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting more time on it. That's all. Then I like the, how you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, and I apologize. I'm the one that's told you June 8th. I'm not quite awake yet. Okay. As okay. you were. All right. So maybe what, what we should do is, Nicolene, you can make that correction, then I'll pick it up from there. Okay. You want to start? So everyone needs to get go out and see for Color Girls Now. It closes June fifth. Again, I say June fifth. Yes, thank a you. A couple of weeks from now. Yes. So get out there, get your tickets. And I also wanted to uh, again say that it is uh, nominated for Tony for the best revival of a play, which is amazing. And also, it has the most Tony nominations of any Broadway show, seven, which is, I think you mentioned that earlier, Micheline, which is absolutely wonderful. So you don't want to miss it because you're going to, you know, miss something that even the, the, the very sort of, you know, the hard Broadway people are voting for. Uh, I wanted to ask one final question, Micheline, because, okay. you know, I know that you're going to have something, um, you know, what, what did you sacrifice to harness the power 
that you express in your work? Mm, that's a great question. What did I sacrifice that harnessed the power and greatness of my work? Um, I think what I probably sacrifice or I use to give myself like inspiration when things are tough and hard to like push through is sleep. <laughs> yes. I can so identify with that. I would say sleep to be quite, just to be like real about it. I sacrifice <laughs> sleep. That's, that's, uh, you don't have to clarify it anymore for me because that is my, the one thing that I always, you know, I would say, I'll sleep when I die. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Somebody said, you know, not sleeping may cause you to die earlier than exactly. you Exactly. But so. it is. And, and, and so when I do sleep, oh, do I appreciate it, enjoy it, especially mm -hmm. when it's a deep, because it allows me to recharge mm -hmm. and reset. But I do sacrifice it in a way because I'm so into what I'm doing sometimes. And time I'm learning as I grow into and evolve into the person that I am today and then the older person that I will be, the more mature person that I will be, I'm realizing that when I'm in it, it's just like, I don't want to stop. You know what I mean? Because I'm loving it so much that I'm doing this and I'm making this and are collaborating with this or have this idea or this thought or, you know, and so I'm, there's sometimes there's not enough time, right? And so I'm just pushing through because I'm like, it's, you know, basically, you know, you have that 24 hours in a day, but it really seems like 10 hours in a day because that's, you know, you don't have the really the, the time to do everything that you want. So I'm pushing through and sometimes I'm on the edge and that edge is fun, but I'm sacrificing a lot of things like sleep when I need to just take my, 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 my tail to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I, and I asked that question because I know that, you know, Indazaki had that same kind of drive and sort of purpose in life and that what you do and what she was doing and what these actors are betraying yeah. are these multiple parts of Intisaki or uh, lives that Intisaki has had touched and that there that it isn't uh, that you're you're passionate about and she was passionate about and they're passionate about what it is that they do and that women who that they're expressing in this play for colored girls are these different passionate yeah. women so that's not uh they're not downtrodden which is how we were always for for so much uh, mm -hmm. depicted as these are fully formed women that i know and that oh. I, that people my life my sisters my nieces my cousins mm -hmm. my, you know and that's why i think it's so important for people to see this yeah, absolutely. The resilient, the perseverance, the strength, the empowerment, right? All of that, the authenticity. They, they're being so authentic about themselves, their bodies, you know, expressing that about love and sexuality, desire. Like all of that is just like real, being so unapologetic about it, you know? And using the verses to tell those stories about things that sometimes are often difficult to hear or share, but we need to know the truth. Yes, and that's very, you know, I see the total alignment of your work and for Colored Girls. It's just, you know, how, however the universe <laughs> made it happen, it was absolutely a perfect match. So thank you, thank you so much for your work, your creativity, for your, um, constantly showing and expressing the beauty of women of color, specifically uh, black women and the, the, the range of uh, 
you know, emotion look through your video, through your uh, paintings, through your collage, through your sculptures, through your, you know, it's really wonderful that you, you, you exist and that you do this. So Thank you. Thank you. That. That's like uh, that, that, that will stay with me because I have so much respect and love for you, what you do and what you've done and what you've contributed to the creative world and to our culture that having this moment with you is going to be cherished because you're, you're just so phenomenal. <laughs> and, and one of these days I'm going to get down on my knees like you, that's my goal. It's just like, you know, Nona Kendrick can get down. I'm going to get down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's my goal. You don't know. I was like, that is my goal. That is my okay. goal to be to be in that be like still have it. You know what I mean? Just like love it. You are fierce. You are my rock star. You are just like everything. Um, <laughs> we will work on that. Yeah. That that getting down on the floor thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Thank you, Nona. Yeah.